Hello everybody. Welcome back to How to Build a B1 Bomber. Dad made it back. We're getting ready to glass this bottom of this SR-71 for you guys by overwhelming demand. But uh, I'm going to show you what all I got done today. I got all this stuff painted. Got it installed. Got my gear door or my bomb bay doors painted. They turned out awesome. I repainted all this inside of here and inside my gear doors. Here, let me get over there a minute down on this. This new paint matches the gear a lot better. That looks good, don't it, Dad? Yeah. It ain't so shiny. And that flat cleared look worked awesome. Only thing though, man, all that stuck was stuck on the bottom. I probably spent an hour mixing that clear coat up and shaking it up real good but I sure like that a lot better than that super shiny that looked good got my wing all sanded oh yeah that was a job right there now I'm ready to uh, pull all my tape off and hit it one time slick it up real good I'm gonna finish it up with some 2500 we'll go over that tomorrow I'm gonna let that sit there for a while but me and dad are fixing the glass to this airplane now this is that two ounce cloth I got and uh, we're gonna and uh, we already got our z epoxy mixed up hold on a second while I get you mounted Let me try and get you a better view crank you up alright you gotta just have a seat there now I'm getting some questioning on this fiberglass no, this ain't going to be our mold. Uh, all this fiberglass does is give us a surface to paint. See, if uh, if you're, hey, what's your hand? Doing? This you don't get no strength from. You know, if you're looking to sturdy up your airplane and you want to glass it, uh, this this is. No, really no stronger than Monocoat. So even on your center sections and stuff like that, even though you're glassing it, you still got to go in there with some heavier stuff first. All this really does, this fiberglass cloth, is it gives you an even layer of resin that's just thicker than like brushing it on. And uh, and it holds all the grain together, so it won't split. And you're gonna just let it go on heavy at first. Watch your hand in. It's gonna get resin all over it. And you just want to spread it out. Leave it on kind of heavy at first. So it has a chance to soak into everything. Now this oak, we noticed on the top, ain't soaking up near as much as that balsa wood did. And uh, that's the reason I, I didn't put it any on the wood before we started this. But it don't take a whole lot. It don't take as much as you'd think. What are you doing, Daddy? You need some more huh? It don't really take as much as you think. You gotta get your center first and you work outward. And 
and uh, helps keep your wrinkles down. See, the bad thing about that super lightweight cloth is when you squeegee it, it wants to move. It wants to pull it. So it's kind of a happy medium when you're scraping it. Not to scrape too hard, but you want to get your excess resin off. And make sure you get past your ends a little bit and it makes it trim a whole lot nicer you just let that set all the way up and then take your exacto around the edge Just when I get low, I just turn my cup upside down in the spot and let it drain the rest of the way out. But you don't want to mix up great big amounts of this stuff at a time. Now I want to come along and scrape some of my excess out of there. Same way that Bondo, don't mix up big amounts. It'll just end up setting up in your cup. The more you mix up, the faster it sets off. I used part of Dad's first box on my gear doors and stuff. So this plane is only, we're up to about three quarters of a unit now. I think one unit would have glassed this whole plane. Well, I think so too. In fact, I think that there would have been quite a bit left over. guys over here and show you something. Crank you, crank you back down here. Let me show you how I mix, mix this stuff and keep it pretty even. Okay. See when you're squirting it in this cup, it's hard to tell exactly how much you're squirting out of each one. So I'll squirt me some in there. Then put my bottles down and go off my bottle. That way you get a nice accurate mix. You know, you can play with the drying, drying time on this stuff. If you want something to set up a little faster, just add a little bit more hardener. When you want something to set up a little bit slower, add a little more resin. You can play with it a little bit. You know, as long as you don't try and go a whole bunch. That's how I get nice accurate.